our objectives for today. By the end of today's session, you will be able to recall what are the components of an effective pitch, okay, so what needs to be included. You will be able to compose a concise, tailored, and persuasive pitch deck, okay, because as Carolyn said, there's prize money at the end. You will have the opportunity to actually pitch your presentation um, to an audience of judges who will give you some feedback um, and critique that pitch for you. Uh, so we want to make sure that your pitch is especially compelling and could potentially be the winner. We'll also, to help you get better at developing a pitch yourself, we'll critique a sample pitch from someone who's actually done this before. Uh, we'll review a few different pitch delivery techniques. So by the end of today's session, you will be able to select which pitch delivery techniques will be most effective for your presentation. So Chris went over a lot of those appeals. We'll talk about a few more ways of thinking about those things. And then finally, we want to make sure that you understand the expectation for today's project, which will be fun. It's meant to be fun and just sort of a test run. Uh, so we'll go over the template for your pitch at the very end of today's session, as well as the rubric for how you will be evaluated by your judges. So let's jump right in. Uh, there's really about three steps to developing a pitch, the pitch that you're going to give by the end of today's session or that you might ultimately give someday when you're pitching yourself in a job interview um, or when you're pitching a business idea maybe to investors. Um, and those steps to developing a pitch are really the steps to anything, right? The first thing you need to do is prepare. Make sure that you've sort of done your research, you understand what it is um, that you're sort of presenting, who your audience is, all of those things. Then you're, after you've done your research, you've prepared, you have all your information, you'll develop the pitch itself. And then before you can give a good pitch, you need to make sure that you rehearse, um, that you're really practiced and you're really polished. So we're going to go through these three steps today. Elizabeth and I will be jumping back and forth. Uh, to go over all of these presentations. We'd be happy to share um, the slide deck with you at the end of today's session to help you as you are working in groups later to develop your pitch. Um, in the meantime, if you'd like to jot down a couple of notes, you may certainly do that as well. Okay, so step one is to prepare. Obviously, if you've gotten this idea, you it's brand new in your head, you're going to have to um, do some research and, and look into what um, what your, how your idea matches with, um, with some, some need in, um, in the world. So um, step one is to prepare, and you need to understand what the goal of the pitch is. So what are, what are you trying to accomplish as you deliver this um, pitch to an, an audience member? And we're going to discuss audience next. So understand the goal. Um, next, you want to make sure you're researching um, your, your idea. So um, do a lot of research. Find out if somebody's done this before. If it's a um, unique idea, um, you're going to have to research and figure out um, how to, uh, how, how that new idea is going to be presented to um, a, a target market. Um, so we'll, you want to make sure you're doing some research before you even begin writing your pitch. Next, you want to be passionate about the problem and be a master of the fact. So meaning that, um, you know, if I'm trying to sell something that I I don't really um, care about. It's not going to, it's going to come off in my pitch that um, it's not something that I'm passionate about. So make sure that when you're um, connecting with your idea, it's something that you're, you're just, you get excited about. Um, and then um, being a master of the facts, know as much as you can about your, um, about your industry or what you're trying to um, connect with and what, what your um, idea is. So um, after you've kind of gone through these ideas of making sure you understand what the goal is and doing that research and being passionate about the problem, being a master of the facts, you want to make sure you understand who your audience is. So if you go to the next slide. Um, so you want to make sure you know who the, who, who's going to be listening to your pitch um, and why, why they're listening to that pitch. And you want to know what their challenges are and, and why they're interested in hearing um, your idea, what their needs are, so meaning um, what they why, why your idea might solve a, a problem that they have, um, what motivates them, why, why would they want to, um, uh, you know, go to dinner at a new restaurant place, what, why, what motivates them to um, interact with your um, product or service that you're, you're trying to pitch, and be prepared for questions. So I, I love to do this when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with my clients. Um, I tell them, pitch me your idea and they will pitch me your idea, and I will try to come up with as many questions as I possibly can that, um, that a potential um, investor or a potential, um, you know, for, you know, uh, audience member would ask. So um, test with your friends, test with your family. You want to make sure that you're 
um, anticipating those questions as they may arise. So those are the two things you want to um, do as you start to prepare to deliver your pitch. Um, so do you want to take us to step two, Elizabeth? Absolutely. So now you've thought about, okay, what is the assignment today? What do you need to do? Who is your audience? Um, and now you actually want to jump into developing your pitch itself. So an effective pitch does a couple of things. One, it needs to be really clear to your audience. It needs to be really direct because a pitch is really short. So you have to be sort of focused in what it is that you say, and it needs to be concise. So getting to really the key details, you can't talk about your entire idea and every single element and all the research that you did and all the things that your product or service will do. That's not really what a pitch is for. A pitch is meant to be quick, short, sweet, to the point, and memorable so that your audience buys into whatever it is that you're trying to do or sell. It also needs to address your audience's needs and motivations. So Elizabeth just said, the first thing you need to do is understand your audience. That's all fine and dandy, but if you don't actually develop a presentation or a, a speech, if you're just giving a verbal pitch like you're doing today, if you don't actually tailor that presentation to the needs of your audience, they're never going to buy into what it is that you're saying. So take that information, that research that you've done, and actually use it to develop the most effective appeal to that particular audience. An effective pitch also balances professional and emotional appeals. So remember when Chris gave an example a little while back of talking about emotional appeals, Remember, you've seen those um, those commercials on TV that played the really sad Sarah McLaughlin music, right, of the puppies who were in shelters and who needs, and they all pull at our heartstrings, and everyone wants to give money because it's so sad. That's another example of an emotional appeal, and those can be really, really effective. But in order for you to be taken seriously as sort of a professional and as someone who's credible because you know what you're doing, you want to make sure that your presentation is really a balance of those emotional appeals as well as professional sort of more logical informational appeals. And we'll talk about how you do that a little bit today. Next thing an effective pitch does is tell a story. Um, so I want you to think today about Freytag's Pyramid. And I used to be an English teacher, so you can probably understand why I'm giving you this example. But think back to your English classes, probably all the way back to elementary school, and maybe in middle school, maybe in high school. Remember the pyramid when you're thinking about a story and how at the very beginning of a story, there's a little bit of exposition or background and then there's some rising details, and then you reach sort of your climax or your most exciting moment, and then there's some resolution at the end. Think about developing a pitch exactly like a story. Tell your audience a story because people love to hear stories. Get them excited, build up to the main points, and then surprise them with sort of the big attention-grabbing detail, and then sum up. And we'll talk about how you exactly sum up in your pitch presentation today. And finally, your pitch will make sure to be focused on effective results and benefits of your product or service. Because we're all humans, we all have needs. When you go to a store and you buy a certain piece of apparel or you go to Target and you pick something out of the dollar section, right? You're buying that because you have a want or you have a need for something. Maybe not the dollar section. None of us probably need those things, right? But um, if you want to sell your idea to someone, you need to make sure that it does meet a need that they have. And so that goes back to thinking about your audience. So let's talk about another English related term that I think you've probably heard in your high school English classes. And those are the types of rhetorical appeals that we use um, in argumentation or in rhetoric, right? When you're trying to make an argument or convince someone to do something. There are really three primary rhetorical appeals that we use. They are ethos, pathos, and logos. That some of you remember these, but some of them are a little bit tricky. So let's start with one that I think is the hardest to remember, and that's ethos, okay? Ethos, when you hear ethos, I want you to think ethics. Okay? Ethos is ethics. And what does ethics mean? Ethics mean that you are an ethical person. You are credible. We believe in you. You have the skills and you have the knowledge that makes us trust you. Okay, So credibility and trustworthiness are part of ethos. So we'll look at some different components of a pitch today and think about when should you really focus on who you are as a team and your skill sets so that you can sell an idea that people believe in because they trust you. The next type of appeal are pathos appeals, okay? When you hear pathos, think of the word empathy, okay? So that root path, P-A-T-H, that means emotion. So a pathos appeal is any time you are appealing to someone's emotion. You can make them really, really angry. Think about political ads that you've seen airing on TV where one candidate really sort of bashes the other one or the emotional appeal that make you really, really sad, okay? There's a whole range of emotions that you can appeal to to make your audience want to act or take action. So think about who's my audience, how, what do they need, 
and how can I appeal to that need in my presentation? And again, as we're going through the components of the presentation today, we'll actually talk about how do you incorporate those emotional appeals in a way that's not sort of cheesy or too gimmicky. And finally, logos. When you think of logos, think of logic. Okay? So you could be making a logical appeal. And oftentimes, a logical appeal is simply because it makes sense. You have a problem, we have a solution. Okay? This is a need, we have the skill set to solve it. That's a logical appeal. So as we go through the key components of your pitch today, we'll talk about when you might be incorporating some of those appeals. And I'll be asking each of you some questions. So I'm going to be looking for a little bit of interaction from my audience today. I'll be launching a few polls when we get to each section of the pitch. And I'll be asking you, within this section of your pitch, what type of appeal are we using here? Is it ethos or ethics or credibility or trustworthiness? Is it pathos, emotion, or is it logos or logic? So if you need to write yourself a little bit of note, Make sure you remember what these things are because we are going to come back to you very, very shortly. Sure so let's get into the meat of it. How do you actually develop your pitch? What are the components? At the very end of today's session, we're actually going to look at a template that helps you frame out your pitch today. And then we're going to look at a rubric that will show you how you will be evaluated. So the sections of the pitch on the screen that you see right now are specifically tailored to this particular assignment or project. Okay. If you are giving a pitch where you're talking about yourself as an individual, maybe you're looking to get a job in a job interview, the components of that pitch might be a little bit different, and the order of the, the pitch might be a little bit different. Same if you're actually pitching an idea to your investors, okay? Um, say you're going on Shark Tank and you have an idea and you're looking for money. The components of the pitch are pretty similar here, but they might be in a slightly different order. So again, I'm giving you this information, but if you're actually interested in being an entrepreneur and giving a pitch someday, please just keep in mind that some of these sections um, might change in, in a slight order. So in your pitch, you wanna make sure that you give an introduction of yourself and your team members. You address the problem that your audience has. You give your solution to the problem by revealing how your product addresses that solution. You address the competition in the market. So who else is solving this problem in different ways? And why is your solution more innovative or more effective? You're going to talk about the market. How does sort of your product appeal to a certain section of the population, right? Who's going to buy your product? And you want to focus on the most narrow group of people as possible, right? If you're selling something, you want to say, all teenagers need this. Well, maybe not all teacher, teenagers. Maybe it's teenagers who are into gaming, right? Or maybe it's teenagers who are into playing soccer. So we're going to think about who is your target market and how do you pitch to them. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about your business model um, and sort of if you were an actual business, how would you make money? How would this idea be successful? Is it feasible? Could you actually produce it? And sort of what would it, what would it take to make money in your actual solution? Because most people who go into business want to make money. That's kind of the goal. So we'll go through each one of these sections individually. Again, you're free to take notes, but I will share this presentation um, as a link after we wrap today. So the first component of your pitch presentation today is going to be an introduction of your team, okay? If you had a slide deck, right, if you were creating a presentation just like this because you're giving a formal presentation, you might include photos, but today we'll just see your smiling faces on the screen. Uh, you want to introduce yourselves and your names, okay? You want to explain your role within the organization. You want to explain what are your qualifications. So, um, you know, if, if your role within the team is you're the marketing person or you're the person who's actually working with the client, you're doing customer service, or you're actually developing the product, that's your role. What qualifies you to be good at that thing? Okay, why should we trust that you're going to do that thing really well? Um, and you may want to mention in a pitch where you're talking about um, a team of advisors who supported you along your journey. So today your advisors could be the instructors or the teachers who are with you in the room, but in the actual business world, you might acknowledge some of the sort of researchers or the mentors and experts that you sort of relied on as you were pitching your idea. Okay, so this is going to be our first test where let's identify what type of appeal are you using when you're talking about your team. Okay, so I'm going to launch a poll right now. All of you will see this on your screen. And I want you to think about when you're talking about your team, all the people in your group, and all of the things that you see on right now, your roles, what qualifies you to be good at this, and you're acknowledging the other people who have supported your work, are you making a logical appeal to your audience? Are you making an emotional appeal to your audience? Or are you appealing to credibility or trustworthiness? So there's a poll in front of you right now on your screen. I would love for you to vote. You're not being graded. That's the good news. 
see some answers coming in. Great. If some of you are on individual computers, trust me, this response is not going to be tied to your name. It's just to get you thinking about this. Let me get a couple responses here, gang. I think you can think about this. When you're talking about yourself, who you are, what qualifies you to be good at this, are you talking about logic? Are you appealing to someone's emotion? Or are you appealing to ethics and credibility? Awesome. Now we're seeing some responses come in. You guys did an awesome job. Okay, so it looks like 40% of you identified this as an ethical appeal. And I would say that that's probably the, the closest type of appeal that you're using here. Because remember, ethics is when you say, here's why you should trust me. Here's what makes me a credible expert on this topic and why you should want a product that I've developed. So I think it's mostly ethos, but about 60% of you also said logos. I do think that this is logical. Right. If you have someone um, who knows what they're doing, that's a logical reason why you might buy a product from them. So great. No one identified that this is pathos. You're on the right track here. So as we go through the components of the presentation today, we're going to reference a few examples. And this is these are examples from an actual pitch deck that an actual company used when they were pitching their business idea to investors, people who are going to buy into their product. And the pitch that we're going to use today, the examples, are from a company I think that you're pretty, pretty familiar with, and that's Airbnb. Okay, so Airbnb, the travel company, um, who makes sure that they sort of provide housing and you can rent other people's apartments when you're traveling. This is their slide deck, so that provides you a little bit of context as to sort of the examples that we're giving. So this is how they introduced their team, right? They provided pictures because this was a presentation. The examples will be from an actual slide deck. You'll be on camera today. It's their name their role within the company, so is it UI or user interface, PR, public relations, business development, brand development, and actual developers. And then there's a little bit of information about what qualifies each person to be involved. So this Nathan guy, the last one, who's actually going to be developing the Airbnb app, he created Facebook apps that have huge numbers of users, 75,000 users, right? I would probably trust an app that this guy developed. He's got some pretty great experience. Now, we're certainly not expecting all of you today as high school students to come in being experts in any of these things, but you all do have really unique skills and experiences that can help you be effective. So as you are introducing yourself in your verbal presentation, just be thinking about why are you good at your role within the team, what is that role, and why you're qualified to do so. Okay, so that's section one. I'm going to turn it over to, um, oh, I lied. This is going to be me. Sorry. Um, we're going to talk next in your presentation about the problem. So first, you've identified who you are. Next, you want to explain very clearly to your audience what is the problem that you know that they have. We all have things that are frustrating to us, right? Um, I'll give you an example yesterday. This is a silly example. But um, all of my Christmas lights in my whole entire house are tied to smart outlets, okay, like with the Alexa. And I'm able to tell Alexa, hey, Alexa, turn on Christmas lights. Good thing she's not closer. She'd be turning them on right now. But when I say that, okay, AI and technology turns on all of those plugs for me and lights in my house. Well, yesterday, Amazon Web Services was down globally, and I went to go leave for the class that I teach, and I tried to turn off my Christmas lights, and they wouldn't turn off. And that was really frustrating to me. I had to manually go around and turn off lights. Who does that anymore? Right? I know that's such a silly problem to have. But if I knew that technology failing was a problem that my audience had, I might have a solution to that problem. Maybe it's some sort of backup generator system to smart outlets. Okay, So when I'm presenting that problem to my audience, I want to first thing, grab their attention. So a lot of you in your essays in English class, your, your teachers tell you, you have to start your opening paragraph with a hook, something to grab your audience's attention. You could start with a really shocking fact or statistic. You could start with a question, like how many times have you been frustrated on your way to leave the house and your smart plugs won't turn off? Okay, and that could be a question. Um, but something that makes your audience say like, yeah, that is a problem that I have. Like, I want to listen to what these people have to say because this is something I'm actually dealing with um, and they might have a solution for me. When you're talking about the problem your audience has, I think it can be really, really tempting to want to provide a solution that like fixes everything. Like, we can do everything. We'll solve the world's problems. But if your pitch is effective and it's concise, it will solve, your product or service will solve one primary problem, okay? So focus what is the thing that's, you know, most frustrating or the biggest pain point 
or your clients, okay, your audience who has the problem. So focus on that. So when it goes to Airbnb, right, the biggest pain point might be hotels are expensive and they're not an authentic um, sort of experience when you're going to travel in a different culture. We can help you provide an authentic experience where you stay. That's a singular problem. Airbnb does lots of other things, but that might be your pitch while you're really focusing on it. You also want to relate your product or service, if you can, to an existing company. Okay, so we'll look at how Airbnb did that, how they related themselves to another company. But say you were, um, you know, we talked about gaming a little bit earlier. Say you wanted to come up with some sort of like online streaming service where people could rent video games. You might say, we're the Netflix for video games. Everyone knows what Netflix is, okay? Um, so if you can relate what it is that you're doing to a really established product model that has a lot of credibility and a lot of trust already, by aligning your product or service with that company that already makes people familiar with kind of what it is that you're trying to do and also enhances your credibility a little bit which is a hint when I ask you next what type of appeal this might be. Um, and finally, you want to make sure that you appeal to your investors. So you've done your research, know who your audience is, what are their specific needs, and how can you most effectively get them to ask? Make sure you tailor it appropriately. So I'm going to go ahead and relaunch that poll. And I want you to think about when you are giving your pitch today, what are some effective strategies that you could use to appeal to your investors? Might you appeal to emotion when you're talking about a problem that people have? Okay, that's pathos. Might you appeal to logic? Like, hey, here's this thing that's a real life problem. Um, we have a solution. Might you appeal to ethos or credibility as to what makes sort of all of you experts? So think on that for just a minute. And again, just to recap, when you're talking about your problem, what types of appeals might you use to appeal to investors? See some great responses coming in here. And the good news is you're all right because you chose all three. I think that especially when you're talking about an attention grabber, you can focus really on any one of those appeals. And you should probably pick one that's most appealing to your investors, right? You could start with an emotional appeal, something like, um, you know, the ASPCA commercials with really sad puppies, right, in the shoulders. That's an emotional appeal that grabs people's attention. You could start with a shocking statistic. That's a logical appeal. Or you could talk about, like, hey, we are experts in this thing, um, and we know that this is a problem that you all have. That would be an ethics or credibility appeal. Okay? Um, so let's look at this example from Airbnb. And what they said, okay, is that price is an important concern for customers when booking travel online. One problem, price, okay? There's a lot of other things coming on, um, but price. They also say hotels leave you disconnected from the city and the culture, and no way exists to book a room with a local or, or become a host. Okay, so these are the problems that existed. They kind of chose three. I would say, again, for today, we want to focus on one. And then they would go on to explain themselves of how they are sort of like the Uber of travel. Okay, Uber, you can call someone, right, and rent a car, right, um, or get a ride. Um, so they were saying it's kind of like that, but for travel in a place to stay. All right, so um, next thing I want to leave you with or talk about is the solution. So you've addressed the part, the problem itself. It's a problem we all have. You've appealed to your audience. Now you, and you're, if you're pitching something, have to provide a solution. Um, earlier, Chris talked about Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban is a very famous entrepreneur. He happens to be from Pennsylvania, so I love using him as an example. Um, he sort of famously said, like, ideas are the easy part. We all have ideas. It's the execution of that idea that becomes really difficult. So this is where you're going to really have to think today um, about how are you going to solve that problem. So I'm going to turn things over to Elizabeth, who's going to jump into this next section. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so once you've established that your uh, target market or, or your your um, potential customer does have a problem, your uh, business or idea, your product or service is um, is going to be the solution to their problem. And so sometimes I think about um, about uh, your your customer might have a headache and you are the Tylenol to their solution, right? So kind of thinking about how you your solution is kind of going to solve that problem. So 
um, how do you solve the problem that you're that you just um, outlined that you, you know that your customers have? So you want to be able to answer that question. And next, you want to um, be able to um, articulate why you are the appropriate person to answer um, to address that that problem with your solution. I just had a client who um, was trying to solve a problem that he identified, but he just was not um, qualified with the audience that he was trying to deliver to. And eventually, he, um, after pitching many times to different investors, he just exited the industry because he wasn't really um, qualified to be talking to that audience. And then also, why now? You have to address the timing of your solution. So sometimes you may um, realize that you have this great idea, but it just does not fit um, the solution that um, that you're looking to to um, deliver. So um, I think if you click again, Elizabeth, there it should bring up another um, box. A good way to articulate your solution is by um, by answering this problem or by by delivering this statement. So we solve the problem that we just outlined in the previous slide by providing what? What's the advantage to help who, the target, who's your target market, to accomplish what? What is the goal that you're trying to deliver? So I think when you go back into your um, working groups today and, and deliver on, um, work through your pitch, you want to be able to take this statement and fill in those blanks as you see here. So you may want to take notes on that. Um, okay, so go ahead and um, take it to the next slide. We'll talk about how Airbnb um, was able to uh, deliver a solution in their pitch. And you see here, it's a web platform where users can rent their space to host travelers. And um, their solution helps them to save money when traveling, right? It helps them to make money when hosting. And they have this desire to have a shared culture through local connections to the city. So it's very, they, they've identify that these are the solutions that their customers um, are solving um, and that, that their problem is being addressed with their solution. So next slide, please. So the competitive advantage here that they're also delivering um, with, um, with their solution is outlined as well. So they're the first uh, to market for transaction-based temporary housing sites. So that's how they're gonna be better than their com competitors. We're gonna be talking about competition next. So um, important to kind of outline how they might be better than their competition. Um, they're gonna host incentives so that they can make money over uh, couchsurfing.com. So they definitely wanna have some incentives for their hosts. They're, they're starting to outline how they're gonna be better than their competition. Um, with them, too, they were able to identify that they could list your Airbnb listing just once, and then you can um, continue to reuse that um, versus we're on Craigslist, you might have to list daily, right? Um, they were identified that they have an ease of use, that they could create profiles for their users, and they had um, a really strong brand that was recognized. So um, they're, they're starting to understand that their solution is going to be better than their competition for these reasons. So then if we go to the next slide, we can talk about um, how it's uh, really important to outline your, your product. Um, so um, we, your solution, you, you have a solution, but then you're going to start talking about your product and you want to paint a picture for the audience with your product. Now, so many times I get working with my clients and they know their product and they know their, um, their, uh, their, what they're trying to deliver so well, but they forget that the audience that they're talking to has no idea what they're talking about, has no idea what their solution is. So you need to paint a picture from a very basic standpoint. So don't just assume that, um, that your audience will understand what it is that you're trying to um, describe. Start very basic, very elementary. Um, so maybe that you're kind of dumbing it down with, it may seem like it's dumbing it down to you, but you really need to get really concrete and basic as you paint that picture for your product. So let's look at what Airbnb did with their product. Um, they were able to uh, just really, <laughs> they were able to just take that product and, um, and, and make sure that the audience as they're pitching was, was delivered very basically. So they said, you can search by city, 
you can review listings and you can book it. Those are the three aspects of our product. They didn't want to um, overcomplicate things as they're delivering it, but they also wanted to be able to tell very easily what it is they're doing with these um, visuals and with the language that they chose. So search by city, review listings, book it. Um, and so they were able to deliver, deliver on that. The next slide is my favorite. Um, I call this a competitor um, battle card. So when you're looking to look at your competition, and we're just going to pause right there. And if you are sitting in this room and, and you're thinking, well, I don't have competition. I'm doing something no one's ever done before. You're wrong. You need to find competition and you need to understand that you have competition out there. So um, I think of this as a competitor battle card where you're going to go find competition and you're going to list out how you do it better but find their advantages too. And you're not gonna be able to do everything better than their competition. But if you, as long as you have enough just to make your competition, uh, just, just to make your target audience want to come to you, um, that's gonna be enough. So you can use this battle card here, your company, um, and you can um, decide if it's, are you more affordable? Uh, can you um, have payment structure that's different than your competitor that it allows um, your, your potential customer to um, inter, you know, come to you because it's easier, you have a different payment structure. Um, do you have a certain location? So maybe there is competition out there, but your location is gonna be better. Um, you can look at that. Um, maybe as you develop a product, you're going to, um, if, if it's a brand new idea, you're inventing something new. Um, here it says has, has patents. That's um, meaning that you will be delivering on something um, that um, is unique and new that no one's ever done before. Um, and so you can list out these different ways that you may be better than your competition and then see maybe competitor A has certain advantages, competitor B has certain advantages, but if you can show how you will be better in this um, competitor battle card, as I call it, um, that, that gives you an idea of how to articulate when you're pitching um, how, you, how you are better than their competition. Now, when you write your pitch, um, don't, don't um, forget to acknowledge that there is competition and how you will be better. So um, what makes your comp company unique and how will you beat the market that you're, um, that you're looking to um, address? So if we go to the next slide, you can look at the competition. Um, and in this competition, we, this is that Airbnb, right? And so they went through and they, they said, okay, these are all our competitors and, and how are we better? So um, they kind of separated them out into different um, quadrants as you see here. Um, but again, they, they found different competitors um, that are in totally different spaces and, and we're able to say, okay, these are how we address problems differently. Um, and you, that's what you'll wanna do as you go and look at your um, pitch template and you start thinking about who your competition is. All right, and next I'm sorry to jump in, Elizabeth. I just want to sort of emphasize, like, all of you today, this is just an idea. So we don't expect you to have a ton of research done on, right, who else is doing this and exactly what we're doing. Um, for a more formalized business pitch where you're looking for investors, you certainly want to address this. As Elizabeth said, simply acknowledging that there are other people doing this is really important because ultimately this is an, an appeal to ethos or credibility, right? Think about political ads where people trash talk each other, right? It's not a good look, right? Like, you're like, oh, these people are being childish and are competing with one another. So rather than trash talking your competition, acknowledging that they exist, but focusing on the benefits of your solution is a really great strategy to make you credible and make people want to buy your product rather than the other. Okay, so the next um, thing that we discuss in, in your pitch is who is your market? Who is your target customer? So we say this all the time. Um, a lot of times our businesses will come in and um, if you don't have a customer, you don't have a, a business. So if you're looking to pitch an idea, this is going to be one of the strongest things that you need to be able to articulate. So who is your ideal customer? Um, and how many customers are there out there? So what is the potential market size? Um, will you be able to grow that customer base um, over time? So maybe you're starting really small and you know that you know, you're gonna sell to other high school students well, as you start to grow, would you be able to pick up other high school students in other districts or something along those lines? So um, who's the ideal customer? How many customers could you potentially have? How will you grow that, those customers out from you know, where you start? Um, and you can look at some of these um, 
you can address some of these ideas by looking at the past market growth and the potential growth that you've seen through historical, um, you know, looking at your competition, who do they serve, how have they grown. So we can address the market, um, the target market by kind of asking ourselves those questions. And um, if we look at Airbnb's uh, you know, market size, they, they realize, okay, well, we are able, there's 2 billion trips booked every year. Um, then how many are booked online? And then how many will be potentially booked with Airbnb? So they're taking the large, large market, total available market. They're breaking it down to that services, serviceable available market, which is um, the online booking and then how much they will actually capture out of that. So you can start really large, how many, how many high school students are there in the entire world, right? In the entire United States. Okay, well, we're just gonna focus on Pennsylvania. And then we know that we need to start with um, perhaps, um, you know, just our school. So if that's kind of what the market you're looking at, okay? And then finally, um, if we go to the next slide, um, I'm gonna discuss the business model. So. If you're going to have a business, you're going to have to address how you will make money. And you also have to address what expenses you'll have. So as you're looking to um, work through your pitch, you need to address some of these um, items. You're going to have expenses and you're going to need to make some money. So what resources will you need to actually get your idea off the ground? Um, what types of expenses will you incur as you're trying to get that business off the ground and as you're running it? And then um, how, how are you gonna make money? So who's gonna pay? Um, pay you for your service or your product that you're developing. So you want to be able to address those three main subjects as you work through um, your, your pitch and just making sure you can answer those questions. And so if you go into the business model, um, next slide, and we look at Airbnb's business model, you can see that the um, share of the market that they, they realized, okay, um, next slide, please. Elizabeth, my computer's having a tiny bit of a delay here. <laughs> That's okay. Could be coming. Still. Yeah. Spinning. Spinning. Okay, well, I can continue talking through this, um, but the business model is just uh, super important. And here's the slide on Airbnb. Um, they realize that there's um, the share of the market that you want to, to create, right? They, they're going to get that $84 million, um, but then they break it down into how they're actually going to do that. It's going to be a $25 average fee, and then their revenue um, will be projected from that. So we take a 10% commission off of each transaction. It's a very simple slide. They very easily address um, how, how they're going to um, make money, what fees they're going to have, and, um, and how that's going to translate into revenue, which is actually um, that leftover money that the business will use to, to grow and to um, pay its employees and those kind of things. So making sure when you look at your business model that you're addressing your expenses, how you're gonna make money and what resources you're going to need. So for some of you, you may need access to 3D printers or you may need access to a kitchen to, to develop a product. So making sure you, you address those things in your pitch as well. So finally, I'm just gonna finish up with some reminders. When we're talking about creating a pitch, it can, we are really passionate about our product or idea and it's very easy to, to go, um, go into some, left field and start talking about something that um, isn't really um, simple for your pitch. So you want to keep it simple. And I think that acronym um, that Chris used was KISS. And um, so keeping it simple is, is really important. You want to appeal to the audience. So Elizabeth, um, the other Elizabeth, has talked a lot about using those different appeals, the ethos, pathos, logos. So you want to make sure that you're appealing to your audience and telling a story um, by engaging. And then you want to be honest. Uh, you don't want to overinflate and say you're capable of doing things that you can't do. Um, and you want to make sure that you just are very um, direct and honest with your pitch. So those are the reminders um, as you go and you work in your rooms um, and try to um, build your own pitch. Those are the last reminders that I have. For